so this is so after after introducing the an overview of market risk in section 1 the objective of section 2 is to explore the different sources of risk that we have or the different sources of market risk and we explore different aspects of this risk to form an overview of these risks now when i talk about market risk the most important thing that comes to my mind is to talk about the important financial products because it is these products through which the risk is transferred to the banks right so basically if i have if a bank owns a stock of some company xyz and has the bank has invested some millions into a stock portfolio and we see that the stock portfolio uh, or the or stocks in that portfolio crash the bank suffers a huge loss let's go back in time to the year say 1995 to 2000 in the us so if you remember if you recollect that was a period which was called the dot com boom so the where the price of the internet company the stocks of the internet companies was just soaring sky high and given the huge possibility that these that these stocks had and i mean at least the market given the market expectations about the huge possibilities that these uh, these companies had the stock prices were soaring sky high but now imagine a bank who has invested in such stocks in, may, in the hope of making huge returns. One fine morning, the market realizes, market goes through a correction and the market realizes that not there is not sufficient value in the stock that they're buying and they're actually overpaying by multiples, by manifolds for those stocks. And suddenly there becomes a structural break in the demand and the price of the stocks crash. So if I remember correctly, the NASDAQ at that point of time had lost 80% of its valuation in a span of just two years. And that is when the stock, uh, the dot-com bubble had collapsed. So banks who had invested in that point of time, right, and in those stocks would face a huge shock, right, a huge loss. So we need to understand the instruments through which the bank is trading and the type of stocks or the type of assets in which they are investing into it and in and to cover that we cover and we have to you know and to bring in that aspect section three of our module would focus on the important financial products so over there we are we cover some of these important uh, you know financial trading instruments like derivatives or uh, deeper swaps we talk about interest rate derivatives you know options mortgage-backed securities because mortgage-backed securities had very important role to play bring in the 2008 i mean they had very critical role to play in the last financial crisis during the uh, housing boom so a big uh, case that we would be focusing on would be during or every time in the most of time in this course we would always keep on coming back to this 2008 financial crisis the housing bubble and uh, most of the cases you would see that the u.s stories are coming up the wall street stories are coming up over and over again so that is what uh, so this is what we would like to so this is the reason why we will be covering the financial product so how to price a derivative what is a derivative how to price a derivative what are the different types of derivatives uh, what are the different types of options what are the uh, difference between what is a spot option futures and what what's an option what's a future what's a derivative what's the basic difference between the two so these are the things that we would be covering over here so this up to this part these first three sections they introduce us to what market risk is what are the important sources from which the risk stems and third what are the important financial instruments through which the risks may be transmitted so once we know the source and the channels, the next part comes that we need to understand is how to model these risks. What are the prerequisites for modeling this risk? And that is where this part of section four comes in. Section four introduces the different prerequisites for knowing market risk, which comprises of probability theory distributions, non-parametric methods, statistical inference theory, and most importantly, uh, the concepts of time series models 
and in this over here in this area we would be covering the time series models in great depth because you know if you need to understand features like volatility clustering or shift and volatility or uh, if you need to predict a volatile time series that is where you need uh, to have an understanding the key concepts of time series so like uh, you know in if you think about the credit risk domain the mostly the models that we use are cross section models like logistic regression linear regression and other sampling methods over here the testing procedure and things would change a lot even though the basic concept of statistical theorization remains similar but a great factor i mean great impact would be coming around in time series models so there would be a very important section on time series model development of the advanced time series modeling as well as the basic modeling and another new part that we would talk about over here would be the monte carlo simulations so simulations play a very critical role in the you know in bar modeling uh, in stress testing of bar modeling and so on so with this section uh, with this uh, we create the framework for model development Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, Ushab, I had missed out your question. I'll just come back to your question in a minute. So uh, over here, uh, what we can see is uh, so when I talk about time series model development, I would be talking about the basic model of time series development, which includes the autoregressive and the moving average models, and uh, the box Jenkins method, which is which we typically call the ARIMA model. So we would start off with, uh, you know, an understanding of the ARIMA model. And from there, we would also need to understand the more complicated, the advanced models of time series like arch guards, T guards, etc. And the family of arch guards models. So we need to form an overview of that. Uh, we need to understand processes like Weiner processes, Brownian or Brownian motion processes, diffusion models, etc. Right, which are very key to understanding the basics of uh, the market risk uh, because they form the basis of option pricing models right the black holes models so from there uh, after we have created the basics for this time series analysis the next part where we go into is the black holes martin model or the quantitative models of market risk where we come where we compare the you know uh, the landmark model, the, Bla the Blash Scholes model, model. We'll talk about log normal property of stock prices. We talk about minor processes and Ito's lemma, where we talk about the Markov property, the Markov processes, right? And from there, we graduate to estimating volatilities, uh, correlation. We talk about value at risk models, concept of expected shortfalls. And finally, we go into discussing the economic capital concept right so this is what the overall view or overall uh, picture of the model is so these are the modeling techniques and gradually as we so the entire idea would be first of all to understand these modeling techniques and then apply them to estimate the different uh, say calculate bar for different products or to estimate the market risk to understand uh, what are the different types of challenges say for example one major market risk could be the stock market bubbles so whether a stock market is riding a bubble or not how do i identify that using these methods now if there if there is a bubble and if i can predict that over the next 12 months there is a chance of a stock market bubble to occur i know that my market is likely to become a more risky market so from there how is it that i can make my or how is it how i can uh, you know adjust my portfolio and thereby maximize my profit and minimize my riskiness so these are some different kind of problems that we would be talking about so one of the major market risk model that we would talk about that we have to focus with the industry standard model is the value at risk model and uh, obviously the economic capital model so this is precisely uh, the overview of the module that i have to uh, that we at dex lab has to offer at this stage 
so i'll just take a pause and i'll take up all your questions and then we'll move forward